the camera. Hi, I'll try that again. Hi, I'm Sarah. I'm Little Snips. Um, welcome to my channel if this is the first time you're finding me. Or welcome back if you've been following me for a while. I appreciate all of my followers and everybody who finds me randomly. I appreciate everybody. I'm recording late again. Um, I was supposed to do this on Monday, but life happens and things get delayed and I'm here on Wednesday. Wednesday, November 8th, 2017. And this is episode 21, 21 for me, which is pretty exciting. It's even more exciting because this is my anniversary video. I have been making floss tube videos for a year, though I took some time off and it's not exactly the same day. I mean, I think I released my first video on November 1st last year, but it's been a year, one full rotation of the earth and or one <laughs> rotation of the earth. That's good. One full trip around the sun is what I meant to say. Um, and yeah, so this is episode 21. It's my anniversary video. Uh, if I was more talented with videos, I would put streamers and balloons and things like that, but I'm not that talented, so I won't. Um, I think I said hello and welcome. I'll say it again. Hello and welcome. Um, yeah, right. Sorry, my, I blanked out for a second there. Um, how you guys doing? It is finally fall here. We had a short dip into fall in Northern California, and then we went right back up to 85 degrees and too warm for my comfort anyway in October. Uh, now that it's November, we seem to have finally cooled down. Daylight savings time, which though not my favorite thing, apparently triggered the weather around here at least to say, hey, it's actually fall and maybe we should act like it's fall. We have rain in the forecast for tomorrow. Um, the temperatures have been in the mid 60s to upper 50s. So, you know, it feels like a holiday. Um, how did you guys do for Halloween? Did you have a lot of trick-or-treaters? Around here, we don't. Uh, the first year we moved here, I think we've lived in this house for going on four years now. And the first year that we were here, I think we had about 10 or 15 trick-or-treaters. This year we had one. Well, that's not true. We had one family, two little boys, and their parents stayed and talked with me for a while and explained that if you go one street over outside the street that we live on, there are plenty of kids walking up and down the street. But in our neighborhood, the kids have basically dried up. They don't come here anymore because the lighting on the sidewalks is not great. Um, probably because they don't come here anymore, people have stopped getting candy. So people have stopped giving out candy so the kids don't have any incentive to come back and check out and see if there are new people or old people who started giving candy again. So I have to debate next year whether I'm even going to bother. I did dress up for me. Um, my husband went out to get something for dinner while we were waiting for kids and I got the wild hair to dress up and you know, I dressed up for me, for, <laughs> for my personal benefit. I didn't go anywhere, didn't have any parties. And like I said, I had two little boys who came and I'm not sure they were impressed by my costume because they wanted candy. What else do you want on Halloween? But that is how my Halloween went. I hope you guys had some fun. I know I've seen a couple of pictures of costumes and things, but I hope you guys had more fun than we did on Halloween. Um, and that you were able to give out most of your candy and you don't have to be tempted by what's left behind. I didn't buy a lot because I knew there weren't going to be a lot of kids, but we did have candy left over. Most of it is gone now, thanks to me and my husband, fortunately, not just me. Um, but yeah, so it was uneventful and sometimes quiet is nice, but sometimes you want some people, you know? Uh, what else do I have to tell you? I don't think I have a lot to tell you. Um, I am catching up on floss tube. You know, I went through, I, after I had my break, my hiatus from doing videos, I made the decision to delete the majority of the stuff that had piled up on my watch later list because I was six months behind. And in that time, you guys have all made, you know, another 10 videos. And I just felt like I would have been really woefully behind. So I'd made the decision to not watch all of those. And if I miss something important, I apologize. It was not my intent to offend anyone um, or to upset anyone by not seeing your good news or your big finishes or anything like that. But I did delete those. And so I've been trying to keep more on top of watching Floss 2. 
Um, my husband likes to make fun of me for watching floss tube. He doesn't get the appeal of watching other people talk about their cross stitch. What does he know, right? Um, but he kind of makes fun of me for watching floss tube. So I try to do it mostly when he's not around, which means I do it during the day. Um, but I have other things to do during the day. Sometimes I have to run errands. Sometimes I'm working on my own stuff and I don't always get right on top of it. So right now I'm, I think I'm like watching things from early October, <clears throat> excuse me, early October to current videos. Um, if you, I went through a phase where I decided to watch the whipped, whip parades, works in progress parades that everybody did. So those happened quite some months ago. Um, but for the most part, I think I'm up to date and watching stuff that's relatively current and adding more stuff as you guys make more videos, of course. Um, so though I may not leave comments on everybody's videos, I am watching them. I am giving you thumbs up. Um, because I think if you have the courage to make a video at all, you deserve at least a thumbs up. Preferably a comment if I can think of something intelligent and worthwhile to contribute to the comment thread, but you definitely deserve at least a thumbs up because as those of us who make videos know, it's not as easy as you might think to make a video. I mean, you can't just, well, you can, you can just sit down in front of the camera and talk and not worry about anything. But you do have to go and gather the things you want to talk about. You have to think about what you want to say about what you're talking about. Occasionally we find new people to talk about or there's a trend going on or so you kind of have to try to stay a little bit on top of floss tube. Excuse me, I'm going to cough. <coughs> Sorry, still kicking the rest of this cold that I keep talking about. Uh, I think my voice sounds better, but my throat is very dry and very sore. So excuse me. I know, drinking water on camera, it's a no-no. <laughs> anyway, so I think I'm pretty much up to date on floss tube. Um, if I have missed something important and you want my particular input on it or my particular reaction, you are welcome to message me uh, or leave a comment or think really hard at me, I don't know. Um, but I will do my best to respond if you need a response. Um, so like I said, I mentioned sometimes we find new people to talk about, and I wanted to bring up a few people that I just recently found. I know that they're not necessarily super new, and I know some of you have talked about them already, so they are probably not brand new discoveries for anybody. But I watched their initial videos, and I thought they were pretty, and huh, I thought they were pretty entertaining, and I thought you might enjoy them, so I'm going to tell you about them. Uh, the first one is Handmade. Uh, her name is Hannah, and I believe she's in the UK. I, if she's not in the UK and she's in Australia or something, I'm going to feel really stupid. But I think she's in the UK. Um, and I know a couple of you have already seen her, her first video at least, and I hope you're following her channel because she looks like she's going to have some good things to show us and interesting things to tell us. So that's the first one. Um, the second one is, I believe her channel name is Kansas Girl, Kansas City Girl in a Colorado World, I think. And I do not remember her name. I'm so sorry. Um, I should have made sure I had that all figured out before I started saying this stuff. But her channel is Kansas City Girl in a Colorado World. She's made a few videos already. So I watched the first one, but I think she's up to episode three now. Um... I like her partially or a lot of Lee. <laughs> not that that's a word, but I like her because she's another geek stitcher. She does a lot of, or not a lot of, but she does nerdy stitching like some of us do. And so she feels like she is part of the inner group or smaller group of my people inside the larger group that all of you compose of my people, if that makes any kind of sense. Um, the third one is, I think their channel is just their names, which is Holly and Anita. Um, they are another pair of stitchers who are doing videos together. And trust me, if I had somebody who was as into stitching as I am, or into stitching at all, really, uh, who was willing to come over every couple weeks and do a video with me, I would do it. I might be able to convince some of my stitching group friends to do that, but we get together once a month. And sometimes we have trouble making that work. So every two weeks or every week might be a little weird. 
Though, Lexa, if you are watching this video, you really should make floss tube videos or go back to making floss tube videos. I know you're busy. I know that life has been kicking you a little bit lately, but you do the most amazing progress on the Hades that you work on and people would probably really like to see them. I know they like to see them on Instagram and Facebook, so why not a floss tube, you know? Anyway, <laughs> now that I've tried to bribe people. Um, so Handmade, Kansas City Girl in a Colorado World, and Holly and Anita. If you have not seen them, I will link them down below. And you should go and take a look and see if you feel like you would like to watch them too. I'm sure they would appreciate having more visitors to their floss tube channels. I'm sure they would enjoy more thumbs up and more subscriptions, as we all do. Um, but yeah, go and check them out if you are looking for new people, or we should always be looking for new people. If you have room in your subscription list, or a couple extra minutes to watch somebody, go and check them out. Um, I have found many people by you guys recommending them, you know, linking them in your descriptions and sharing who you've discovered, so I figured I would return the favor. Um, let's see, what else is going on? Uh, again, it's November 8th. It is... <laughs> Today's an anniversary of other sorts as well, one that I'm not going to celebrate, and that's all I'm going to, well, that's not all I'm going to say about it. I am surprised that it's been a year. It has been both the longest year, the hardest year, and surprisingly speedy, if that makes sense. What, those of you who are older, um, you know that time kind of seems to speed up the older you get. I remember it seeming like forever, forever from the beginning of the year until Christmas that year. I mean, that was an age. And, you know, when I got told at eight years old that I had to wait until I was 16 to get a driver's license, I was going to be ancient, ancient at 16. Um, now years go by pretty quickly and eight years seems like nothing. So the fact that it seems like it's been a really long year and a very speedy year at the same time, is, I guess it's standard, but it feels a little weird to me. Um, yeah, enough of that. Um, I currently, as I have told you before, and as you can see behind me, um, and apologies for the strange lighting, it's overcast outside, so I had to turn on another smaller light. Um, I tried to keep the reflection as much off of my glasses as I could, but there's not much I can do about it, so I apologize for the spots of reflection in my glasses it'll work it's happy you don't need to see my eyes right you just need to see what i'm going to show you also snake rack behind me as i've discussed before i have some very sick snakes right now guys um one in particular is really not doing well uh, and we have been taking him to the vet and trying really hard to get him healed um and it's he's hanging on which i am thankful and grateful for and i love the fact that he's fighting because he is fighting um but if you could send some thoughts and hopes and things like that for my snake i know if you don't like snakes and you don't want to it's not a requirement it's just you know i have shown you a couple of my snakes and thank you for the compliments those of you who have given them to me um or the comments at all thank you for being brave enough to stick around and see them i know that's a big deal for people and i really appreciate the fact that you're willing to give them a chance um, but yeah, any good thoughts you can spare to send my way for my snake would be much appreciated. If we can get him to pull through, I'm going to be the most, uh, the most, I'm going to be the happiest person on the planet. If we can't, we have plans for that and it's a sad thing to think about, but he may provide some information for the vet that's treating him currently or for vets in the future. So it's, it's not really a win-win either way, but if he happens to pass away, um, he, his death will not be pointless. Yeah, enough of that, too. <clears throat> I have another drink of water. Excuse me. At least it's water. It's water this time. Look, it's clear. It's flavored, because I really don't like plain water. Like, water out of the refrigerator or water out of the tap or drinking fountains has never been my, my thing. I, I'll drink it. It's not like I won't drink water, but I don't like it, unless it has flavor in it. This happens to be um, a Safeway brand. If you have a Safeway, you should have Safeway somewhere near you, even if you've never been in one. 
Um, or unless you're overseas. I don't think they're overseas. I don't know. Maybe they are, but I guess not. I would suspect not. English is not my friend today, so I apologize for the stumbling too. Um, but I need to drink flavored water, otherwise I get bored with it and I won't drink it. And I need to drink it. So, flavored water. This is wild cherry, which is one of my favorites. More information that you needed to know because I want to take a swallow on camera. Right. So, 15 minutes of introduction and general conversational ramble. There goes my itchy nose, so we're right on schedule. Uh, let me go ahead and talk to you about the things that I have worked on in the past couple of weeks. Um, again, like most people say, this is going to be in no particular order. Not going to worry about which I stitched on first or whether I switched back and forth. I, I will say that I am liking my new rotation idea, which is that I stitch on a project until I reach a particular goal, and then I move on to the next project, as well as having a couple of things that I sort of keep right beside me most of the time, so I can get a few stitches in on them every day or every couple of days, so I can actually make progress and try to finish things before the stitch along or whatever it's a part of are done, are over. Um, and the first one of those that I'm doing is the Bands of Variation Sampler by Doreen Jones being hosted by Lakeside Neocraft. Um, this is a variegated color, excuse me, variegated color um, sampler, band sampler. Uh, and I showed you a picture, I have showed it to you a couple of videos, I started showing it to you a couple of videos ago. I showed it to you last video and I will show you where I was, I think I took a picture, where I was last time you saw it. I'll insert it here. And this is where I am now. So as you can tell, I completed the, that first block. So I don't think I had that done when I did my last video. I don't think it was completely finished. So it is completely finished now, as you can see. That's the top the top block. And this is the second block, the um, October block for the sampler. This one actually changes color about halfway down. So where this line is over here, it changes color. And there's a few stitches of orange, which is the next color in my collection. I'm doing the bright rainbow, so it's rainbow colors. Um, but this, that line is where the color sort of officially changes, except for this red border down here. And this actually has words in it. It has text and we were not expecting that. I'm, I'm perfectly fine with that. Some people were a little disappointed that there were words, but, um, yeah, it's turning out pretty nicely. And I think because there, pardon me, because there are words, um, I think I'm on track to finish this by the end of, I, sorry, I called this the October band. This is the October band, the one that's completed. This is the November band. And I think because it's got words in it and because I'm doing a little bit as often as I can, I think I'm on track to finish this before the end of November. We'll see, but I think so. Um, the other one I was working on on a somewhat regular basis was the specialty stitches sampler, or it's not sampler, specialty stitches stitch along also by Doreen Jones, also being hosted by Lakeside Needlecraft. Um, and that one is finished. The last clue is out. People have finished their, their pieces and they're beautiful. Uh, not what I was expecting it to look like for what, I don't know. I don't know that I actually had much of a solid expectation, but it is not what it turned out like. And I have to say, I'm actually more pleased by what it actually is than what my brain was kicking around and assuming it was going to turn out to be. Um, I'm trying to see if I need to find a piece of something to put behind this. I don't think I do, so I won't, but um, this is where I am. Oh, let me insert where I was last time you saw it. And actually, it's not actually where it was. Um, I did a few more stitches on it before I remembered to take a picture, but I did take a picture before I then finished what I had was working on. So here's what it looked like almost the last time you saw it. And this is what it looks like right now. Um, I always have trouble with the camera and the folds are not helping, but 
I finished, as you can see, I finished the border, which I know for a fact was not finished last time you saw it. Uh, so I finished the border and I started on the second part two or three. I think it's part two. But I started on the next part, which is this tiny little, yeah, this tiny part right here. Um, I decided that rather than continuing to do the entire thing in my uh, Unicorn Tail from Fabrics by LJ, that I was going to put some other colors in here. So I will be on the next, the pieces going forward. So the second piece and everything going forward, I will be, yeah, this is, so like I said, this is all the same color, the um, two tails color. But going forward, I will be inserting um, some lights and darks that are in or similar to the two tails that I used for the border to try to give it a little bit more contrast. Um, and I have to admit that I'm a little afraid that if I do the entire thing in the variegated floss, I might actually run out of floss. And I only have one skein of that particular color. So I'm going to, I don't know, it's not cheating, but I'm going to change things up a little bit. And on the rest of the clues, the rest of the parts of that particular stitch along, I'm going to do some different things. You will see it. I will show you, I promise. But there you go. <clears throat> Excuse me. The next thing that I'm going to show you is my freebie knotwork piece from Ink Circles that I was using to experiment with the Sulky Blendables thread. Now you know that I have another piece, um, a free quote saying chart by Wee Little Stitches that I'm using Sulky on as well and having a lot of fun with that, though I did not touch that this time. This is the first one that I started working on uh, and I let me go ahead. <laughs> ah, this inserting picture thing is not, it's out of, I'm out of habit of doing this. So, okay, here it is the last time you saw it. And here it is this time. Uh, yeah, this is the January freebie not work pattern from Ink Circles from January of 2007. The colorway that I'm using on this is Primary, so it's red, blue, yellow, and green. Uh, color changing, obviously, variegated floss, uh, variegated thread, anyway. And uh, I had this whole thing, the whole, these woven pieces finished the last time you saw it. What I did, since, you have, since you've seen it, is I decided that I was going to fill in each of the bands, and there will be four of them. So these are the first two that I got done. I didn't do the other inner bands because I don't know, I didn't. But what I decided I was going to do is fill the bands with colors from primary. So yellow, blue, red, and green. And then the very thin inner band in, in the center of the colored bands, I'm going to go back and put primaries in again. So you'll have sort of a rainbow-ish, it's not rainbow, but you'll have the same colors showing up again in the, in the finished piece. Anyway, this is just a little scrap of 28 count even weave that I decided to do this on. Uh, obviously it's not surged or anything, uh, but there you go. That's where it is. The yellow band, which is, well, you can probably tell, you're probably seeing this pretty clearly, hopefully, but the yellow band is filled in uh, and I will be moving on to the blue band next. The next thing I'm gonna show you, I, well, I'm gonna show you a couple of full coverage pieces. I'm trying to up my full coverage game. I'm trying to get some of the things, the patterns that I've bought and that I really want to stitch on. I'm trying to get some of them started. Also, Anne P um, started the Full Coverage Fanatics Facebook group and I am a member of that group and I would like to participate in that group. That means I actually have to have full coverage things to work on or to start at least. So I, am, so I have a couple of full coverage things that I've worked on in the last couple of weeks. The first one is the Shakespearean Fantasy by James C. Christensen, which is a Hade. I will insert, I don't have a picture of where this was either. I have a picture of where it was a while ago, which is when I finished the first page. So I will insert that picture here. And then I will show you where I am now. So, and try to hold it straight. Um, so this is the first page. Whoop, 
This is the first page over here. This is the second page, which I am close to finishing. I haven't done it yet, but I'm close. And this is the page where we start to get out of the black, which is nice. I mean, this page is primarily, is basically black and navy blue. So there's a little bit of difference, but you can't really see it. You can't really tell that there's anything other than black in that corner. Here, and the light is going to make it weird because it's getting kind of washed out by the lighting. But here you can, let me see if I get it closer, maybe if you can see. Uh, a little bit anyway. You can see that that is green and te there's teals and blues and greens that are starting to show up like this little, wah, they're the, like the colors of this thing here, the little bubbles. Uh, so it's starting to open up. Um, I have shown you the pattern before, so I'm not going to insert that again, a picture of what it looks like. But it basically, it's black across the top, and then it opens up in sort of a door-like shape, and you get to see the tower of all the Shakespearean characters that are in there. And it starts, uh, so it's not, I feel like it kind of looks like there are leaves in there, in this section. It kind of looks like there are leaves. Sorry for holding it crooked. Don't tr try not to make you sick, but but they're not really leaves. It's just color opening up. Anyway, I think it's really cool. I really like the colors that are coming in. And as I said on the full coverage pa fanatics page, I am a Shakespeare girl through and through. I love Shakespeare. I have um, all the world's a stage from James C. Christensen as well that I would like to stitch. So. Yeah, I, I love Shakespeare, and so this is the perfect pattern for me. The other full coverage piece that I'm going to show you is a new start, so I don't have a picture for you of where it was or anything, but I do have the cover. It is an Artisee piece, and I think I talked about this in the last episode maybe, but it's an Artisee piece by Sarah Mullen, and I got it from uh, the artist's name is Sarah Mullen. I got it obviously from Artisee. And this is what it looks like. So it is the Coca Pelle sampler. Uh, that's what it will look like when it's finished. It is a full coverage piece. And I did start it. And this is probably going to be kind of hard to see because it's pale. The, the contrast between the fabric and the thread is pretty, pretty small. But this is my start. You can see that there are stitches on there anyway. Is that a fluff? Oh no, those are, those are actually stitches. They're so pale, they look like they're just lint hanging on there. But obviously I started in the left-hand upper corner. Uh, like I said, the contrast is not great on white fabric. And I thought about restarting it because the contrast is not great, but it's full coverage. You're not gonna see the fabric behind it. And when it gets framed, I don't know that it really matters, especially if I put a mat on it or if I frame right up against the edge of the stitching you're not going to be able to, it's not going to matter what color the fabric behind it is. So I didn't start over. Um, this is a piece of 18 count Ada because it's all full stitches and it doesn't need to, um, doesn't need fractionals or anything like that. It's also not going to be huge. I mean, it's a decent sized piece of fabric. We'll open it up and show you. It's a decent sized piece of fabric, but it's definitely not as big as a Haid. A uh, full size head anyway, so I didn't feel like I needed to go smaller on the fabric. Also, uh, <laughs> Janet, if you are watching, look, look, can you see that I overlocked the fabric? I know it drives you crazy when I put tape on fabric, and I actually, because my sewing machine is relatively new to me and I'm not a great seamstress, I can sew, but I'm not amazing. Um, I discovered the overlock stitch and didn't realize that in my, well, I didn't discover it. I knew about it, but I didn't know that my machine would do it. And I found a video specifically about my sewing machine and how to do the overlock stitch. And I figured, why not? I'll give it a shot. So it is overlocked. So you don't have to worry about the tape driving you crazy. Um, I did it in black black thread it doesn't matter again because that is going to disappear when it's all done so the color doesn't really matter but it is overlocked so anybody else who is having anxiety about me putting tape on my projects i think i might do this in the future uh, it was relatively easy to do uh, the settings are pretty simple to control and since i have the foot and i have the sewing machine and my husband bought it for me so i would use it i should use it so i think i'll do that in the future
And the last one I'm going to show you is another stitch along by Doreen Jones and Lakeside Needlecraft. Um, and I have been, had been working on it pretty regularly. I don't know if I'm going to keep doing that because the season is, has moved on. Uh, Halloween is over now, but here is a picture of where I was on the spooky Halloween sampler when you last saw it. And this is where I am now. Oop. There, this is where I am now. So I, th yeah, I showed you last time we saw it that I had finished this, the finger, the first part, the first block of the, or first section of the sampler. So I went ahead and started working on the second part um, with this, uh, I, for it just being a roof, I think it's really cute. So I'm working on the second part now. I will say though that I, had to think really carefully about stitching this stuff because for whatever reason my brain kept wanting to skip stitches and I I don't know why uh, but I I had some trouble stitching on this again this is also 18 count Ada that I hand dyed oh I didn't have um, when I showed you last time finger I didn't have the back stitching so the cobwebs um, here and up on the top branch. I didn't have that done and I realized that when I pulled it out to work on it again. So I did that real quick and then went on to part two and I will continue to work on this I think um, probably more slowly so you may not see it as often. I I might put it away because like I said Halloween is over now it says 2017 on it and so it really should be finished in 2017 but I'm not that much of a stickler for the rules so I don't know. I will probably keep it out at least accessible so I can get it if I want it. The, accessible is a real, really weird word to use, I think, because unless you put something away, and I do have some stuff I've done this with, unless you put something away and you just completely ignore it and it's out of sight and then as a consequence out of mind, you forget that you have it or that it exists, nothing is really not accessible, right? We can always go through our stash and pull something out and go, I think I'd like to work on this today. So, but I might put it away. We'll see. You will see. We'll all see. I'm going to take another drink of water now. Excuse me again. Okay. So if you follow me on Instagram and I will link that below in case you want to, and you don't know what it is. It's my, it, my Instagram name is little snips. Uh, actually, my Instagram name is Lil Snips, I think. L I L Snips. But I will link it below. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you have seen a lot of pictures of this next thing because I'm moving into other stuff. I'm going to show you this guy first, and then I will show you. Um, well, I'll show you my one piece of haul, though it's technically not really. I guess it's not really haul. It is kind of. I don't know. I'll show you. And then I will talk to you about the giveaway for my anniversary giveaway. I'm going to, I'm going to, um, pass some things on, give some things away because that's what you do. Right. And because I appreciate you guys being here. So, and I want to celebrate and part of celebrating is sharing things that I have found with you guys. So anyway, first thing I'm going to do though, I'm going to stop rambling or not. Cause you know, I can't do that. I'm going to show you this guy that I've been working on. Um, like I said, if you followed me on Instagram, you have seen pictures of him. If you have, if you, I haven't posted him. I was going to say if you follow me on Facebook, but I haven't posted him in any stitching groups on Facebook because he's not stitching. It's not cross stitch. This is a crochet thing. But if you follow me on Instagram, you have seen a lot of him and you will probably see a lot more of them because people really seem to like him. And I'm planning on making more of them um, as gifts, but primarily as custom orders from people who would like a dragon of their own. And yes, I did say dragon because he's a dragon. It's a dragon, Harry. This is not a Harry Potter thing. <laughs> but anyway, this is, um, I call him Errol. This is Errol, my dra dragon of adventure, because he is the first one of these that I have made and I'll try to keep him in frame. Um, he is crocheted. If, as you can tell, if you are familiar with crocheting at all, I'm trying not to get him too close to the camera either. Uh, but he is a crocheted creature, uh, which means all of these pieces were crocheted and then attached together. Um, 
he has a wire spine. So when it comes to things like his tail, his tail and curls, ta-da, and you can bend it and pose it however you would like. The spine does run all the way up his back, so his head does move very slightly. Not a lot, but it does move. Um, and then his wings are wired. So I have them folded back like this now, but you can open them out. You can, I'm trying guys, I'm trying. You can um, obviously fold them back down. You can push them forward or back. Um, you can lay them out this way if you really want to. You can do basically whatever you want with his wings. Now, as it's wire, the more that you bend it, eventually it's going to weaken. It is wrapped wire, so and there is some stuffing in here, so it is protected, and it won't snap, you know, the third time that you move things. But he's pretty cute, and I want you can't. You're not going to be able to tell really well, probably. But his eyes are painted too. I hand painted his eyes. I have clear safety eyes, um, and then I paint them in whatever color would be appropriate. And yeah. So this is Errol, and there will be more like Errol, or more dragons anyway. Um, if you are interested in talking to me about custom dragons at all, you can message me through YouTube if you want to. You can message me through face, uh, not Facebook, through Instagram. Um, I will put a link to my, my business page on Facebook so you can message me there if you want to. I'm not going to turn this channel into, look at all the things I'm selling you. I might sell occasional things, but this is not going to become a purely business page, so don't worry about that. But if you're interested in these guys, you know, come and talk to me, because they are available. Right. And then the one piece of haul that I got, you have, if you follow Stitcherista on YouTube, on FlossTube, sorry. Um, I think she did a flip through of this magazine because she has a subscription, I think, as well. And I signed up for a subscription to the Stony Creek Cross Stitch magazine. Um, I have a subscription, digital subscription, to just Cross Stitch. I occasionally buy digital versions of the UK Cross Stitch magazines. Um, but this one, I, got, I bought a copy of the magazine um, when I bought one of the, bought some stuff to go along with the free pattern, and I decided that I like the magazine, and so I would subscribe. It's a quarterly magazine, so we only get four issues a, month, a year, but I, I, it's, I like it. It's fine. Uh, like I was saying, I think Daniel did a flip through of this, so I'm not going to do a full, fl full flip through. Tongue twister. But I will show you some of the things that I thought were cute. Uh, this one is Make a Joyful Noise. And I can't find the artist's name right now. But I'll show you the picture. That is Make a Joyful Noise. With the bird singing to the snowman. And and perhaps he's singing back. I'm not exactly sure. Those are just... Maybe the cardinal is singing as well. Do cardinals sing? I, I don't know. But anyway, bird singing to the snowman, which I thought was really cute. And I have to blame, I think, some of my love for birds now on my mom because of that tablecloth and the story she told me that went along with it. But yeah, I see things with birds on them now and I just go, well, my mom would probably like that. She probably would. I don't know if she wants me to stitch a bunch of stuff for her. You know, all the things stitching ever, but she would probably enjoy it. Uh, this one is called... Well, they call it this, the greatest gift jewelry box because they put it in a jewelry box but it's it's I'm gonna call it the greatest gifts pattern it is this family and friends are the greatest gifts in life and again there are birds like I said bird thing and the and the jewelry box this is actually pretty cute I don't know if I would put it in a jewelry box but it is cute and then there was one more and again it's birds again but I tell you, it's birds. And the birds are not my thing. I Like I said, I'm not a, the bird person. It's my mom. My mom used to be a butterfly person, and she got overwhelmed by all of the butterfly stuff. Now she has a story um, regarding her herself and her partner who passed away and their connection to birds. And so everything bird now. So this is Home Tweet Home. And again, I don't know the artist's name, but isn't that adorable? Isn't that cute? 
And it's crooked on the page, so I am actually holding the magazine straight. The picture is crooked. Isn't that cute? Anyway, bird issue. But that's my one piece of haul. I have not, I plan on getting the free pattern from Stony Creek because I have the spring snowman, so you gotta get the summer snowman, right? See, even though summer snowmen are weird, but you gotta get it. So, but I haven't gotten that yet. Um, but that's my one piece of haul. So I think I said last episode, or maybe the episode before then, that I felt like I could probably stitch from the stuff that I have, that I've been collecting a lot of patterns at least. Um, this time I was good. I didn't buy anything and I'm trying to be good. Somebody, and I don't remember who it was, suggested that when you feel like you want to buy something that you should stop, shop your stash. Go and look at what you already have. Um, and if you need to buy fabric or something like that, then I guess that's fair game. But if you feel like you need to buy a whole new kit, if you need to buy a new pattern or something, go and look at the things that you've already bought that you wanted for for some reason, you thought you wanted to stitch it for someone or for a reason or just because it was cute or pretty, go and look at the stuff you have and then shop that. So start something from what you already have and maybe that will take care of the urge to buy things. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't buy things or that it will completely cure you of wanting to buy things. I promise you there are things that I still want to buy and I may buy, but at least it makes me stop and pause and, and think, do I need that or do, do I just feel like doing something new? And if I feel like that just doing something new, can I do it with something I already have? Okay. That was not really a soapbox. That was just me. Just me. So, like I said, I it is my anniversary video and I feel like I would like to give things away. I would like to pass some things along to you guys so you can share in my celebration. So, um, let's go, let's go over the rules first. First and foremost, in your comments, please do not say anything about a giveaway. Um, I would just like you to say, what would I like you to say? I would like you to say what you look forward to about Thanksgiving. What do you love about Thanksgiving? Tell me that. Or what do you not like? Tell me about Thanksgiving. Tell me about what you like. Tell me what you hate about Thanksgiving. Um, and I will also give you numbers. So tell me what you like about Thanksgiving. Or no, you know what? You don't have to do the Thanksgiving thing. I'll just do, I'll just do the number thing. If you feel like sharing what you like about Thanksgiving, awesome. Do it. But I'll just give you numbers because that's just easier and then you don't have to they decide whether you want to share your Thanksgiving practices with somebody you don't really know and I Thanksgiving gets a little fraught for people I know so never mind the Thanksgiving thing don't do that or do but it's your choice um, I will give you numbers and you can just say I would like well, I would like number whatever or I would I am interested in number whatever I'm sorry my shoulder is really itchy right now and I know it's weird to like scratch and adjust my bra strap and things but for whatever reason, apparently today, I'm not going to have itchy nose, although I did. I'm not going to have full out itchy nose. I'm just going to have itchy shoulder. So I'm, I'm sorry. I don't mean to offend people. I'm not trying to flash you or anything. Just a bra strap. Right. So, um, last year, last year? No, it was this summer. I think when, right before I stopped doing videos for a while, um, I no, it was earlier than that. I, this is a truly truly rambly video and I boy anyway I finished this earlier this year and it is a Santa snow globe that says hope or love on the bottom <laughs> I finished a thing for my mom last year that said hope and so I just got them confused anyway I finished this it says love it's pretty cute again it has a bird on it it has, has a mouse on it and it's Santa on a bike how cute is that and that is my squeaky cat. It is on plastic canvas. You do not have to do this on plastic canvas. I, when I send this out, I can send you a piece of plastic canvas if you need it, but you can do this pattern on anything you want. You can do it on plastic canvas. You can do it on fabric. You can do it on perforated paper. It does not matter. It's all good. Cat. <laughs> But I said then that I was going to give this away for Christmas in July, and obviously I didn't make a video in July, so that didn't happen. 
So I have the pattern and I would like to pass the pattern on. It is not marked up, so you will be able to make a work copy off of it or you can just use the pattern as it is. It was a dimensions kit. I do not have any thread for it, I apologize. I don't have, um, as I offered to send you plastic canvas, I can also send you a piece of felt for the back if you would like a piece of felt for the back. Um, but um, yeah, I want to send, I want to pass the pattern because I said I was going to and then I never did. So if you would like the pattern for the Santa snow globe, the love Santa snow globe, just say, I would like number one. He will be number one. I would like to stitch number one. I'm interested in number one. Number one looks good. Just say something about number one. The second thing I would like to give away. I discovered, I, I like seasonal things and like many of us like seasonal things, I do. And when I see seasonal things, I tend to grab them because I, I wanna collect them. Who knows if they'll ever get stitched, but I'm interested in them. So uh, Leisure Arts has a series of pamphlets that go to craft stores, Michaels and that kind of thing. And they have the, this is the seasonal samplers book. And I showed you this cause I bought it uh, because I like it. That's the summer, I believe. Let me double check. Yeah, the soft summer breeze. That's the summer sampler. And then on the back are the spring, fall and winter samplers as well. Um, but I like samplers, or not samplers particularly, but seasonal stuff. So I like them so much that I've grabbed more than one of these. So I would like to give this away if you are interested in season, seasonal samplers. I don't think it says in here, oh, it does. These are designed by Alma Lynn Hayden. So again, if you would, if you are interested in samplers, or seasonal things or both and you would like this book say you would like number two say something about number two number two is great i love the seasons in number two number two would be fun don't be vulgar <laughs> not that i'm expecting you to but um say something about number two and i will put you in a drawing for that uh let's see what else uh no i'm not gonna do that because that's a little silly uh let's do this one um, I will actually do these two together. This is a leisure arts book that I got back in the day when I subscribed to one of their Christmas, Christmas cross stitch book of the month or of the quarter or whatever clubs that they had going on. And this is the stockings were hung. The stockings were hung. It is book 16 of things of Christmas remembered. And it is a hardcover book. I don't stitch stockings. So much as I like some of the, some of the designs that are in here, I don't stitch stockings. I, I don't have anyone to stitch stockings for. We don't really do stockings. It's not a tradition that my husband grew up with. So it is, I grew up with it, but it's not a tradition he grew up with. So we don't do stockings and he wouldn't really appreciate a stocking being stitched for him. Um, the kids that I are in my family have stockings, so I don't need this book. I would like to give it to somebody who would like to stitch this book, or if you're collecting these books. Um, so if you are interested in the stockings were hung, say something about number three. Number three has great stockings. I love stockings and number three would make a great addition to my collection. Again, say whatever you would like about that. Along with, excuse me for bending over, along with um, the stockings, I would like to send out this leaflet. This is a ribbon alphabet that came from a Just Cross Stitch magazine, and I don't remember which, I'm sorry, but it is a ribbon alphabet and it is by, designed by Kathy Livingston, and it's, it's really, it's just a leaflet. It does have colors, it does have the full alphabet in here, but I would like to send this with the stocking book because I don't know, maybe you'll use the ribbon alphabet to put the name on the stocking or use it for something else. Um, use it for fancy a fancy sampler of your own or to decorate something. I know a lot of people like to collect alphabets. I like alphabets, but I don't stitch a lot of them and a ribbon alphabet is definitely not my speed, so 
if you would like, again, the book and the pamphlet, say something about number three. And that's it. I had a couple more things that I thought about adding to the giveaway, but I think I will hang on to them for other giveaways in the future or for sprinkles, as uh, Bendy Stitchy Michelle says, um, or passing the stash or trades or I don't know, but I think I'll hang on to those. Um, you're not missing out on anything truly fantastic and amazing. Like I'm not holding back a fully kitted up hate or a Dimensions Gold kit or anything like that. They're just little things that I'd like to pass on sometime, but not today. Um, I will keep this giveaway open until... Let's say it'll be open for a month. So open until December 8th. So you have until December 8th, 2017 to comment on my on this video and let me know which, if any, of the uh, items you would like. And to be honest, if you can, if you would like all of them, you are welcome to tell me you are interested in all of them. Just say all of them. You don't have to try to think up something for number one and number two and number three. Just say they all look great. Um, and I will enter you into drawings for all of them. You will only win once. I'm not going to do multiple gifts to the same person because I don't have that much stuff to give away, but you are certainly welcome to enter for all of them if you're interested in all of them. Um, so December 8th, put a comment on this video and let me know what you're interested in, and I will do a giveaway reveal or winning reveal on my uh, whichever episode in December that lands on. It may be my first episode, it might be the second, but I think it'll be the first episode. So yeah, December 8th, say what you want down there. And I think as we're cruising up on an hour now, I think that that's all that I have to talk about. Um, new floss tubers, uh, new floss tubers and Stuff to give away. Again, don't say anything about the giveaway. Oh, and I will send things to anybody. So if you're overseas, you're not in the United States, you can enter as well. If you are under 18, though I don't know of any under 18 people who are saying they watch Floss 2, but if you're under 18, I need your per parents' permission because I'm going to have to get your address. Uh, other than that, anywhere in the world, say your thing. Brand new Floss Tubers, Dragon stuff, and good thoughts for the snake. And that's it. And I'll see you again in a couple of weeks. Maybe on a Monday even. Bye, guys.